Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be talking about empirical and molecular formulas. So let's take a look at what an empirical formula is and what a molecular formula is. So what is an empirical formula? An empirical formula is a chemical formula's smallest whole number ratio. So for example, these formulas, C2H4, H2O2, S3H9, if we're looking at the empirical formula of these, you can reduce these. So C2H4 can be reduced to CH2. Now that doesn't mean that this is you know, um, not real and this is real. In fact, it kind of means the opposite. Empirical formulas are just simple ways of being able to represent a bunch of possibilities, okay? So don't think, oh, hey, okay, anytime I have two numbers that are gonna cancel out, I can just divide by them and that's going to give me something that's real. No, that just gives you the empirical formula of that substance. It doesn't necessarily give you anything that's, you know, that exists in real life. H2O2, I can divide both of these by two, right? And that can just give me HO. S3H9, again, I can take those and I can reduce those to just SH3. Now again, empirical formulas often don't exist, okay? But they can be extremely useful when we're trying to do calculations because it can be used to find the mole ratio for real molecular compounds. So in other words, you know, CH2 doesn't exist. But if I have CH2, as an empirical formula. That gives me the ratio of, okay, for every one carbon, I have two hydrogens. And that's also true of this. For every one carbon, I have two hydrogens. And same thing with this, right? For every one hydrogen, I have one oxygen. Well, for every one hydrogen here, I have one oxygen here. And same thing here, right? For every one S, I have three H's. That's true, yeah. For every one S, I have three H's. And that's just kind of what an empirical formula is. What are molecular formulas? Those are the actual chemical formulas. And the way you find them is by multiplying the empirical formula by a whole number. So let's go backwards, right? I had CH2 as my empirical formula. If I multiply those by 2, what I end up getting is C2H4. OH, if I multiply by 2, I get H2O2. And then SH3, if I multiply by 3, I get S3H9. Now take a look, right? So here's some empirical formulas. P2O5, H2O, NO2. Uh, C5H11. Notice I can't reduce these down any simpler. They've been reduced as far as possible. But molecular formula wise, look, I can multiply this by 2 and get P4O10. I can take this and multiply it by 2. I can take this and multiply it by 2. I can take this and multiply it by 3. Um, and so those give me my molecular formulas. Also notice H2O is an empirical formula, but it's also a molecular formula. Sometimes you don't even have to multiply it by anything. The empirical formula is something real, okay? But not always. So how do we find the empirical formula and molecular formula? You don't have to memorize these steps. They're given to you on your formula page, but still, the first thing you need to do is pretend you have 100 grams of it, okay? So just pretend you have 100 grams of whatever compound you're looking at. Convert all of those from grams of whatever elements you're looking at to moles. Then divide each number of moles by the smallest number of moles and round to the nearest whole number if it's close. That should give you the smallest whole number ratio. We call that the empirical formula. If it asks you for the molecular formula, all you do is you look at your empirical formula, you compare it to your molar mass, and then if you need to, you multiply by the appropriate number. Now, I know that sounded confusing, but we're going to do two examples, and when we do the two examples, I think it'll be a little bit easier to follow. All right, so here's how it works. Suppose you have a compound that has 50% sulfur and 50% oxygen. This is its molar mass. What's its empirical formula and what's its molecular formula? Okay, now a lot of times people make the mistake because they're like, oh, it's 50-50, so it's like SO, right? Got one S, got one O, simple. That's not true. Remember, sulfur and oxygen weigh different amounts. If you look at the periodic table, sulfur weighs more than oxygen does. So just saying that it's 50% sulfur and 50% oxygen doesn't actually give us a whole lot of information unless we convert. So what am I gonna do? Pretend I have 50 grams of sulfur, since that's the first thing. Convert that using our nice trick of using molar mass and using the periodic table, this is what the molar mass of sulfur is, to get how many moles of sulfur this has. 1.559 moles of sulfur. All right. Oxygen, same thing. Pretend I have 50 grams of it. Just change that percent to grams. How much does oxygen weigh? It weighs 16.00 grams according to the, our periodic table. Notice grams cancels and I'm left with 3.125 moles of oxygen. Great. Now, what do I do? 
I take whichever one of these is smaller and I divide by it. 1.559 is smaller than 3.125, so I take this and I divide by 1.559. Great. My mole ratio is 1. I have 1 sulfur in my compound empirical formula-wise. i got to do that also for oxygen. 3.125 divided by the smaller number, 1.559, I get 2. Great. I have double the amount of oxygen. So I have 1 sulfur and I have 2 oxygens. Now you might think, hey, what if I did this backwards? What if I you know, took the bigger one and divided? You're going to get fractions. You should always get whole numbers. Okay. If you get fractions like you know, 0.5 and 0.25, that means you ac accidentally divided by the wrong one. So I know my empirical formula, though. Hey, that's kind of nice. My empirical formula is SO2. Great. Now, what is my molecular formula? Notice it gives me the molar mass. It says it's supposed to be 128.13. Well, what is the molar mass of our empirical formula? If you add this up, S and two O's is 64. I have to compare 64 and 128. What is going to be the number I need to multiply this by to get to 128, which is the number that was given to me? Answer, I have to multiply by 2. 64.07 times 2 is about 128.13. So my actual formula is S204. Again, I follow the directions. And notice it gives me the molar mass, which is, again, important. I have to find the molar mass of the empirical formula that I just found. And then I compare them to one another. 64.07? Nope, it's supposed to be 128. So if I multiply that by 2, I get 128. So I multiply my empirical formula by 2, and this is my molecular formula. So the answer is SO2 and S2O4. All right, let's try another one. This one's a little bit more complicated. I have 3.09 grams, or sorry, well, percent, but remember, we're going to change it to grams, of hydrogen. I have 31.6. I'm going to say grams again of phosphorus and 65.3 grams of oxygen. Molar mass is supposed to be 98. What are the empirical and molecular formulas? Let's go through this, right? Hydrogen to start with. What's the molar mass of hydrogen? 1.01. .01. I get 3.059 moles of H. Let's do the next one. Phosphorus. What's the molar mass of phosphorus? 30.97 according to the periodic table. Let's divide that out. 1.02. All right, 65.3 grams of oxygen. We already know that's 16, right? Because we've used oxygen so often. Notice what I get, 4.081 moles of oxygen. Great. I'm going to take a look at this. Which one of these is smaller? Or smallest, sorry, because there's more than one choice. Uh, 1.02. All right, let's divide each of those numbers by 1.02. Take that. Divide by 1.02. I get 3. Take that. Divide by 1.02. Obviously, I get 1. Take that. Divide by 1.02. I get 4. Great. I have three hydrogens, I have one phosphorus, I have four oxygens. What does that look like? Empirical formula, H3PO4, that's phosphoric acid. All right, I'm supposed to have a molar mass of 98. Is the molar mass 98? Yes, it is. So if you add this up, you get the molar mass of 98. So I actually didn't have to do anything. The empirical molecular formula are the same. Just like H2O is an example of an empirical molecular formula, some things are empirical and molecular formulas. All right? So I hope you found that helpful.